looks like I'm gonna have to try this again because apparently it's problems with the sound levels last time and also it's a little disjointed because I was reacting to it but let's just you know right off the bat I mean yeah it, it wasn't as bad as say anything discovery but then it's also kind of like saying a nice solid turd is better than you know diarrhea after a you know, very hot burrito it doesn't burn as much and it all stays together but it's still not exactly great so, so let's, let's start off. We get a little dream sequence of Picard and Data in Ten Ford at the on the Enterprise D, playing playing poker, and it's like okay. Now again, not much you get because it's a dream sequence. So they can go anywhere for the most part, but I kind of wonder why they chose the D instead of the E, because they spent as much time on the E, I think, that, as they did on the D before they you know. Belly flopped on the Viridian 3. But I think, you know, the answer to that one is, you know, because people are more familiar with the D, you know, so. Which kind of goes in the thing of, you know, when you're sacrificing plausibility, you know, you're, 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 you're pandering to the mass audience. You know, they're not going to recognize the E. The, the, the E got plenty of exposure in the ads and the movies, and they made plenty of money, so. I think people were, and, and, and just showed the register number, NCC 1701E, USS Enterprise. They'll, they'll figure it out, okay? And, and of course, you know, they, and suddenly they're, you know, they're in orbit watching Mars go blue, you know. They, and we cut to Picard at, at his, at, in, in the Chateau Picard. And, I pegged that he named the dog number one before I even heard that. that yeah, he's going to be in the dog number one. That's how freaking predictable these guys are. He's called that a mile away. But not from there. We, you know, we meet his Romulan, you know, house staff, you know. And then you can pick the Romulan because they're not acting like Vulcans, really. They're a little too emotive. A little stoic, but still emotive. You know, so... And we meet Dodge and her boyfriend, and probably the most idiotic attempted, you know, covert op. Because again, they have transporters. Why do it there? You beam in, beam her, and take her, and grab and beam out, and do what you want at your leisure in a secure location. It's like. I blame Kurtzman. He may not be writing credit, but I blame Kurtzman for this because he, he's the one who set this thing in motion and probably plotted it for the most part. So we're going to have a fight with some guys in the covert op thing where you kill the boyfriend and have those things and smash furniture around. So, you know, that's not the way anything would operate. Even modern day equivalent type thing. They wouldn't do it there and they sure as hell wouldn't you know, just wantonly kill some bystander. And probably knock knock the boyfriend out and do a snatch and grab and get the girl out of there and, t and do it all in a secure location where they can take their time. Yeah. So. But of course, so she activated and they quit waiting around until she activates and she activates and kills them all. So, you know. And then we get the pushy reporter, you know, bringing in certain ex exposition about the attack on Mars and the synths and. Why did you leave Starfleet after being assured that she would not ask why he left Starfleet? And Sir Patrick gets to pontificate a bit, you know, about how they, they, they were not stopping them. You know, they we stood down. You know, okay, wait a minute. Okay. One, I think it also begs the question of I don't think uh, Kurtzman and crew know how a supernovas operate. And also kind of forgot, it's the Romulan Star Empire. They have plenty of ships and plenty of other planets of their own. So the idea that the Federation have to come charging from halfway across the galaxy to help them evacuate uh, less than the population of China. They keep saying, 900 million! Oh, you're forgetting we're talking on a planetary scale. And we got... Uh, we're pushing 10 billion here. Okay, like I said, China's over a billion. So, again, the classic case of not thinking things through. That's like the whole mantra from everyone who connected with Bad Robot. Don't bother thinking it through, just put it on the screen and move on. And 
I think, you know, the whole thing of you know, these, you know, androids going rogue and attacking people. It's like, you know, I, I, they, I don't know. I think Kurtzman may have watched iRobot a few too many times. Because I would think uh, if they were going to start mass producing androids, they would have kind of a mass kill switch ready. You know, they started going off, you hit the button, they all shut down for a while until they figure out what's going on. You know. So, this is just, you know, there's, there's a little too much heavy layer of dumb and expecting the audience to be dumb enough to buy it, too. And going into the attack on Mars. This, you know, that ignited the upper, you know, the flammable layers of the atmosphere. They, Okay. One, I did not see any evidence of any serious terraforming that took place on Mars. So we're talking probably the same thin, mostly carbon dioxide op- atmosphere that it has now. What the hell is supposed to ignite? And especially it's thin. The upper atmosphere ain't that high, okay? You know, and it wouldn't be any more flammable than what was down on the surface. And, you know, and again, uh, uh, they also don't know how fire works, apparently. Fire requires oxygen. Upper atmosphere, there is very little... Here, on an oxygen-rich planet as ours, there's very little oxygen in the upper atmosphere. Mars, there's really not much of any, okay? That's, you know, so, no, it's, it's, again, they're forgetting. This is not just dumb 12-year-old kids in the basement watching the show. NASA scientists watch Star Trek, okay? Engineers watch Star Trek. A lot of you, they're, they're, you know, JPL people, you know, you'll, you'll find Star Trek primabilia all over those, all over in Mission Control there. So, yeah. stop assuming it's just dumb kids watching these shows. Or actually, the way it's going, it'll only be dumb kids watching the show because you're going to piss off everyone else who's got half a working cerebral cortex. But, of course, we got you know, the girl who is the bestest at ever, and she is the key to everything. And, again, thanks to the leaks, we already know, you know, we got a... Somehow we have a flesh and blood person with a positronic brain. Okay, I, you know, we, I, you could see that under circumstances, but not the circumstances they set up. And also, we got suddenly Jean Luc Picard turns into Basil Exposition for a while there as he somehow figures out that he is Data's, you know, she is Data's daughter, uh, well, anyone, uh, without any information in place to where he can even possibly think this up. He might be able to figure there's some kind of connection with Data here, but, but to conclude immediately, the, therefore, she is, you know, what? No, there, there's no way he should be making that kind of leap, unless, you know, despite the supposedly, you know, slower pace, it does kind of rampage through the uh, plot points at a rather breakneck pace here, so. And um, they get attacked by more goons. One, I think going deeper into the building would have been a smarter move than going up to the rooftop where there's no, you know, no obstructions at all. They could shoot her from orbit. Yeah. Or beam her up from you know, without any notice whatsoever. Do they beam her up and get her out of there? No. They beam down more and goons take take pot shots at her. And suddenly she's leaping around like uh, like the bionic woman or whatever. And, and she's it's just supposedly a regular human body. And it's like, I don't care what kind of brain you got in there. The human body still has certain physical limits. One of which is not, not being able to leap like 30 yards, you know, flying through the air with the greatest of ease and doing these things. And the, 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 the dumb is strong with this one, okay? And of course, you know, they make them in pairs. Of course. Well, okay, there's no real reason why that would have to be made in pairs, only except that we, you give the gal a nice dramatic death scene and still pay her more because you know, keep bring her around, you know, and you know, find out she's working on the Romulan, you know, sal- you know salvaging the Romulan Cuban, you know, the, the bored Cuban Romulan space. Okay, why? Why not? Okay. If they, if any race that had a Romulan Cuban at their disposal, sure, you know, scrap the hell out of it, you know, find out what you can. 
but and also I'm kind of curious about anybody who's been to Okinawa does, does the coastline look anything like that because that looked a lot like Malibu frankly okay I, I never got the impression that you know, Okinawa had those kind of cliffs along the coastline but I guess 400, 400 years hence you know so who knows what happened At least they fixed Data's hairline. Because that's probably one of the biggest complaints there about those teaser things with the scenes of Data and those dream sequences that the hair looked completely, it looked like a very bad wig. So at least they got that rectified. See, they are listening. But, but the thought that somehow this painting... Lodged amongst all the other member berries back at Starfleet Archives. Uh, by the way, uh, it was noted that the you know, that was, if that was supposed to be the model from Picard's office, uh, no, that's that, the Stargazer. You know, the, that model he had in, in his office was yellow for some strange reason, and the and the registry was not that of the of the Stargazer. So it was probably just you know something that Picard picked up. You know, oh, it's a it's a constellation class. Oh, okay, fine, I'll grab it. You know, I need a, I need a knickknack for the office. So. But, uh, like I said, it's a, it's another case of probably a lot of wasted potential. And a kind of a ham fisted plot being shoe, you know, being. And some, you know, not rather bizarre acting choices, too, because that one gal, it's like, you know, when Picard asked the thing about, you know, a, well, that's another case of the series, seriously dumb, too, where. Talking about you know growing a uh, growing an android from a single positron. One, I don't think they even know what a positron is. A positron is a, is a subatomic particle that's positively charged. Okay, actually, it's a uh, positron. Actually, a positron is actually the uh, opposite charge thing of an electron. It's antimatter. Okay, <laughs> that's what it basically is. I, I think you know. Asimov coined the term in you know in his robot you know, series, but you know because it sounded cute. But in which case, I think positronic doesn't necessarily mean positrons. Okay, <laughs> Maybe something slightly different. But like Doomcock pointed, that is you know trying to say that you could grow an entire android from just one little positron, quote unquote. That's like saying you could take a part of your RAM chip from a computer and regrow your entire computer. Not just the hard drive, but the computer and all the data inside, and that is horse crap, okay? Because... No. There's not the equivalent of DNA, all right? So there's just they're they're asking a few to me. You know, John D. F. Black had a had a rule for Star Trek. It's like only ask your audience to believe to believe one impossible thing at a time. And Kurtzman's approach is to just layer on the impossible things one on top of the other. And then step back and wonder why they tend to crash and burn. You know, like, like Gary says, the man has priors. Okay, this is not a shocker thing. That why are you suddenly again? Discovery was a train wreck. They just refuse to accept it because they're too invested in it to accept it. They've got to force this thing through to save face and save face with the investors. But I think one more season and that's okay. That's enough. Pull the plug before that kills us. I kind of wonder if it's a little telling that uh, we didn't get a next week on Picard. No, we got a coming up, um, and they got a mishmash of probably like at least half of the next round of episodes, next six episodes coming up. So we can't tell if we're going to see Riker and Troy uh, next week or three weeks from now or whatever. We want to understand, though, the, the first three or four episodes take place all on Earth. We, we're not even going to see space for a while, except, of course, in the obligatory dream sequence where Picard thinks he's back on the Enterprise. It's it's a weird thing. It's At, one, at, at the same time, it's kind of plodding along, supposedly a much more you know deliberate pace, but also ramming through the plot exposition at a breakneck pace. 
it, it's it's weird, and, and and I'm not sure how general audiences are going to put up with it. I'm not sure how we're going to put up with it, frankly. But uh, and yeah, they said we're getting a season two. Um, last I heard, CBS itself has not officially greenlit season two. Kurtzman and his group can announce all they want. They're getting a season two. They you know they're talking about section thirty one. It's like there's been no official order from section thirty one. There's one crank out there saying they've, they're they starting production in March and there's no no sources cited whatsoever and nothing in any of the trades no there, there's, a, there's a lot of bluster out there you know a lot, of, a lot of smoke and not much fire so but yeah that's um, it's it's not the total train wreck yet but then most train wrecks don't show that way so it, we're, it's still rumbling down the tracks but I'm still not convinced that the bridge is still standing so we'll see what happens here until then PayPal Patreon down below and PO box for now is still Captain Robert April 4046 North Goldenrod Road number 115 Winter Park Florida 32792 and we will catch you later